China is at war with the desert, and the desert is winning. In the past 40 years, China has lost roughly 15% of its entire land area to desertification. That's an area roughly twice the size of Texas. Sandstorms ravage the country, turning the sky yellow and causing deadly air pollution everywhere from Mongolia to Beijing. But recently, China has been fighting back against the sand. Like the Great Wall that was built nearly 2,000 years ago, the nation is building a new wall to keep the desert at bay. But instead of being built with bricks and made and by soldiers, China is building their new wall with trees. They have already planted over 66 billion of them, and they're only about halfway done with the project. China's war with the desert has been going on for over 5,000 years. In fact, you could even argue that the war began millions of years ago, when the deserts in the north of China first started forming. As the Indian subcontinent rammed into Asia, what's now western and northern China got cut off from the ocean's moist air. The massive Himalayan mountains formed, as did a series of smaller mountains and basins that eventually became the deserts of northern China. More recently, over the past 1,000 years, China's population grew from around 60 million people to 1.5 billion people around a 25x increase. All these people need to farm and raise livestock to eat, and eventually they've started using some natural resources faster than those resources could regenerate. In the mid-1900s, when China was industrializing, communist leader Mao Zedong led three great cuttings, periods of mass deforestation in China. This created more farmland to feed its growing population, and the extra wood was used to power steel furnaces that were key to the country's industrialization. Of course, it also set the stage for deserts to grow. And the growth of deserts, in turn, causes sandstorms. Northern China sees periodic dust storms that blow deadly sand particles into the air, shutting down schools, grounding flights, and turning the entire sky orange. Besides simply losing cropland to the desert, China is losing lives to the desert. Cutting down trees isn't the only way that China causes ecological crisis. China has 175 million sheep within its borders, more than any other country. Locals raise these sheep in the dry northern regions of China, where the environment is too harsh for other livestock to thrive. But even though these sheep provide a source of income on otherwise unusable land and they're adorable, there's simply too many of them in too small of an area. The sheep need to eat and there isn't enough vegetation to go around. Plants in the area get eaten back further and further until there's none left. The desert keeps spreading. So in 1978, after seeing sandstorms get worse and worse while the desert grows faster than ever, Chinese leaders hatched one of the craziest plans ever to fight the desert, the Great Green Wall. This project, more accurately translated as the Three North Shelter Forest Program, would see the planting of billions of trees across almost the entirety of northern China over a period of 70 years. It's arguably the most ambitious ecological project ever taken on, and over the past 45 years, we've seen China make tremendous progress. Each year, the country plants trees over an area nearly the size of Ireland. These massive efforts may already be turning the tables on desertification. Back around the year 2000, the desert was growing by by around 10,000 square kilometers a year. Now, China is actually winning the battle, reclaiming more than 2,000 square kilometers of desert each year. The actual techniques used to plant the Great Green Wall vary from region to region, with some areas planting trees next to major highways, and others creating a checkerboard pattern of new trees to hold back the wind, or sometimes even using planes to drop seeds onto degraded grassland. The Chinese have even been researching genetically engineered plants, chemical dune stabilization, and farming techniques that could grow rice in the desert. And in addition to its environmental benefits, the project also has huge economic benefits. Local community members are employed to plant and take care of trees, and over time, some of the wood is harvested and can become an ongoing revenue stream. China even has a national tree planting day where every able-bodied citizen is encouraged to plant several trees each year. On the surface, it seems like the Great Green Wall has been extremely successful and could save China from its rampaging dust storms while also drawing down a huge amount of carbon dioxide. But is it too good to be true? The reality is many of the trees that are planted die. In fact, in some areas, not even a single tree survives after being planted. Even though experts are trying to choose the hardiest, most drought-resistant trees they can find, it's hard to grow a tree in the desert. But China needs to take care of these trees, not just put them in the ground. You might rightly wonder, is it even possible for these trees to survive long-term, or will they eventually suck all the water out of this area? China needs to focus on quality over quantity if this project is going to survive for hundreds of years. Most of the new forest China is planting is monoculture 
meaning only one species of tree is planted in an area. This makes the forest very vulnerable to pests, diseases, and any variation in the climate. In fact, in the year 2000, one billion poplar trees in northwestern China were lost to a single disease. That's over 10 years of work planting forests lost because the ecosystem had no resilience. Policies in southwestern China have also seen failures. Farmers were found cutting down native plants to replace them with non-native trees that the government would pay them for. The government was effectively paying people to make the ecosystem worse. Surprisingly, some very simple solutions might actually work better than some of these top-down Herculean efforts. An experiment in the Tanjir Desert showed that by simply fencing off some dry land and forbidding grazing, after five years, nearly 40% of the desert has once again been covered by plants. Another experiment saw that after banning farming and sowing ecosystem-appropriate grass seeds for five years, they saw 60% of the desert covered by shrubby black desert wormwood that could slow wind erosion. There's also some more subtle forces at play that suggest recklessly replacing the desert with forests won't work well. The strong winds of northern China blow a massive amount of dust through the country. Although this causes huge damage to the people affected by dust storms, some of this dust actually lands in the ocean, where it fertilizes plankton growth that draws down CO2. The light-colored desert also reflects a lot of heat back into space, compared to the dark trees that tend to absorb more heat due to their color. Although in general planting more trees is better for the climate, it must be done carefully to make sure there's no unintended consequences. All things considered, there may be better approaches to China's desertification problem than a massive centralized campaign to build a wall of trees. The story of one inspiring woman in China could point to a better way. Yin Yuzhen was born in northern China, and after she was betrothed to her husband through an arranged marriage, she moved to his village in the desert. She and her husband lived in a cave dwelling underneath the ground that was covered with dead wood. She saw the sandstorms firsthand and was determined to do something about it. So she sold her family's sheep to buy some saplings and she got to work planting trees. The first batch of trees she planted struggled. Only a dozen survived out of the hundreds she and her husband planted. But over time, she learned which species do better and how to grow them well. Over the next three decades, Yuzhen went on to turn over 4,700 hectares of barren land into forest, an area roughly the size of Manhattan. Desertification is a massive problem, and as humans, we have to act as stewards of our ecosystems and planet to ensure a thriving future. While China's efforts have had mixed results, they've invested a massive amount into halting desertification and have seen some really impressive progress. So although China's efforts to grow forest haven't worked perfectly, I commend them for the effort. At Ren, the company I founded, we we spend a lot of time analyzing efforts to protect forests, plant trees, and otherwise help with the climate crisis. And it's not easy. You'd be surprised by how often a well-meaning project has an unintended consequence or is doomed to failure because of some unforeseen circumstance. Luckily, there are still some important projects out there that our community is funding right now. If you're interested in what you can do to help with the climate crisis, you should subscribe to our channel and check out our site to fund some of the key solutions we need to end the climate crisis. Over 13,000 community members are helping us fund projects ranging from destroying highly polluting refrigerant molecules to protecting rainforests in partnership with indigenous communities. We'd love if you joined us.